Hi there, I'm Carol Lutzinger. Welcome back to Science Stuff, and I'm glad you're here today. I thought we would have some fun, but you have to ask your parents' permission or whoever's taking care of you, because this one involves food. And it doesn't have to be the specific food that I've brought, but that does make it a lot more fun. I thought we would talk a little bit today about how scientists work. Now you may have an idea in your head about what a scientist does and what a scientist looks like. There's someone with a white coat and wild hair and wearing huge glasses and frumpy shoes and working in a laboratory. But that is not what all scientists do. There are a few who fit that description. But there are other scientists who go out in the field and do field work. Today we're going to talk about a couple of those. One of them is an oceanographer. You might also think about the game wardens. Texas game wardens are really important to the ecosystem and make sure that people are not overfishing or fishing where they're not supposed to be. And everyone who's going fishing, if you're over a certain age, you have to have a fishing license. Otherwise, you're not playing fair. The rule is if you're going fishing, you can catch so many fish, they have to be a certain size, and you have to have a license. I think it's if you're over 16, but I could be wrong on that. Don't count on it. You would be better off to check with the state on that one. But one thing that they do is count fish. <laughs> yes, they count fish because that helps people know if the fish population is healthy, if they're overfishing or not. It, it's very important. I have heard that there are some fish that people have been turning loose from their aquariums that are now in the Gulf of Mexico that have no natural predators. And that means these fish, I think they're called lionfish, they like to eat little shrimp. And the shrimp that we get in the restaurants is sure good. Um, but if the lionfish gets to populate too much, there won't be as much shrimp and then it'll cost more. So we're going to pretend that we are an oceanographer and our task is to go out on a boat into the Gulf of Mexico and catch fish. So this bowl is going to represent the Gulf of Mexico and this is going to be our fishing place. And we are going fishing now. Now when the scientists do this task, they have a large boat and it has huge nets that they drag along behind the boat. And then they pull the net up, put it on the deck of the boat, and they look through it and count all the fish. We're going to use a measuring cup. <laughs> yes, we're talking about doing things at home. You can't just hop on a boat and go out in the Gulf of Mexico. We're just going to pretend here and think we're about Think about being a scientist who is an oceanographer who is doing a count of the fish in the Gulf of Mexico. So here goes our net into the Gulf. And oh, we caught a lot. So I'm going to put that Gulf of Mexico over here and we're going to pretend that the tabletop is our boat deck. And I think I'm going to put a sheet of paper here so we didn't, don't mess up the cloth. All right, now boys and girls, you can see that I have fish of many colors. So I'm going to sort them by color. This is what they do. They sort the fish by kind of fish they are. You may have gone fishing with your family and you've caught redfish or, sna or trout or perch. I don't know, might have caught a ribbon fish. So we're going to sort these out and I'm going to put them by groups of, by color. And we're just going to pretend that that's a certain species of fish. And you could do this with, you could do this with rocks if you wanted to. I'm just, I thought it'd be more fun to do goldfish. So I'm putting them here by color and that makes it a lot easier to sort. I have two little green ones, lots of gold ones. So now here I am, I'm the scientist and I'm saying, okay, here's my fish. I have, and I'm going to make a tally because that's what scientists do. 
I have a little notebook here that we that we made in an earlier program. It's my science notebook, and so I'm going to put my information in here because I have to report back. An important skill for a scientist is to be able to write a clear description of what they've done, what they've discovered. If you figure out something and you're not able to tell someone about it, it's a secret and nobody knows. So I have to report back and say, you know, this is the kind of fish that we're catching in the Gulf of Mexico, and I have a couple of dangerous fish here. These green ones are going to be grass grazing gringle fish, okay? There's no such thing, but I've got two grass grazing gringle fish, and that spells trouble for this scientist. Two grass grazing gringle fish. There, I wrote that down so I can remember that when I go back and tell my boss. We've got trouble in the Gulf of Mexico because I have only five of the purple passion fish. And that was what everybody really likes to eat. Five purple passion. Five purple passion fish. And that means if I've got two of these green gringle fish, they've been eating the purple passion fish because they really like that fish. And we're going to have to do something about that problem in our Gulf of Mexico. Now I have lots of the regular goldfish. Oh, there's plenty of those and we're not worried about those. Uh, but I would count these. There's four, eight, 12, 16, 20 goldfish. 20 goldfish and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten orange fish. So now my task is to convince people that these green gringle fish are a problem and we have to figure out where they're coming from and how dangerous they are. Now if they if they are left there they would multiply and have babies. On the other hand if these were my good fish the green gringle fish oh no there's only two left what are we going to do? Then we have to say no more catching green gringle fish because up to now they were able to catch them. And there's only two left. Oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? It's really important that scientists know what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico and the other oceans around our planet. You know our Earth is a water planet. And if our oceans are in trouble, we're in trouble. The sun shines, it evaporates the water out of the ocean and it comes back down to us as rain. And it waters our planet. And we have things to eat things grow and we like to play in the water we like to do things in that water we drink it we take a shower we do all sorts of things and we waste a lot of it so as we're working through this kind of a science activity knowing that we're keeping track of the kind of organisms that are living there and what to do about the population of them is really important and that might be something that you would like to do when you grow up. You could be a game warden, you could be a wildlife biologist, you could be an oceanographer, you could be all sorts of things. But as we talk about science careers, keep that one in mind because if you like living along the Gulf, like we do, uh, that might be a career that you would like to follow as we go along. So another career that we would have that would be very interesting and important here in the Valley is a geologist. <laughs> so this is where you get to go raid the cookie jar. Yes, mm-hmm. Chocolate chip cookies are a good representation of what a geologist does. Now, a geologist, there's that mixing up the science word with the Latin word. Geo, G-E-O, means earth in Latin, and that's the language of science. A geologist is a person who studies the earth. They study rocks and they're very important for something we like to have, which is oil and coal, because we need that for fuel to run our cars, to create electricity, to do all sorts of things. So let's pretend, here's the geologist, they're wearing their boots, they've got their hat on to keep the sun off and they're going out to see where can they find oil? And if I can get the toothpick jar open, boy, that's a tough lid. So I am going to be my, my geology hat on, and here we go. I have found this rock 
layer that looks like it might have coal in it and I'm going to go digging. Now a big issue is what to do after you dig out that coal. If you've been driving between Brownsville and San Antonio about to Corpus Christi there was a huge huge area where the people had been mining for shale in Texas and it was acres and acres and acres of big hole where they'd been digging out the shale and the last time I was able to drive up there it was all covered up they had restored the surface so that grass could grow there again but that's something we learned so here we go here's my pick here's my cookie and I'm going to dig out all the chocolate chips that I can because let's pretend that this is the coal and as I dig I'm leaving a mess behind digging for coal and shale does leave a terrible mess behind and as you dig if you if you do this activity at home you need to be careful with the toothpicks because they do have a sharp point and you can stick yourself with it so you have to be careful so as I'm digging out my chocolate chips oh this cookie is so crispy and it's smelling so good oh good thing good thing I don't have a glass of milk because I might start munching on this cookie let's see oh this one's harder to get out and I want to get out every last little bit because each one is worth money now you have to think about this oh and there's some on the underneath side too so I'm digging deeper and deeper and as I dig deeper I leave more holes in the surface of the earth and that is a problem and when you fly over these areas they're really sad looking because there there's no trees growing there's no grass there's no animals there's nothing left there living anymore because of the mining purposes so that's why environmentalists said if you dig something out you have to cover it up and fix it up so here's what's left over lots of holes in the ground now I can't go back and fix the cookie but I could go back and fix the ground of course I'd have to dig a hole from somewhere else and go put it over there and if you've noticed around Brownsville there's a lot of dump trucks heading out different places to put dirt in new areas and they're digging that soil from along the river and there's huge holes along the river now <laughs> where they've been digging out the soil so for every action there is something that happens and we as people we have to think about what we're doing when you dig a hole in your yard that's your yard but if you go digging it out where someone else is going to live someday they may not want that hole there and you have to figure out how to cover it up or make a lake out of it and that's a dilemma you might be the kind of scientist who helps people solve those kinds of problems and we are always going to have plenty of problems for people like you to help find the answer to so thank you so much for watching science stuff today and that's it for now 